any problem with the voice. Hello, Teacher Ivana. Hey, good morning, good evening to you, or good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. Here, it's good afternoon. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to have you here in this live to speak about this topic. For the first time, uh, I have someone who's interested in reading. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I love reading. I've loved it from a young age, and now I try to do it on my Instagram with younger students through, through the storybook readings, which is where I think you discovered me, right? Yeah, that's it. True. So uh, I would like to start first with you telling us about yourself a little bit. So who's teacher yes, Ivana? Sure. <laughs> so uh, teacher Ivana, I mean, most of the students here, they know me as Miss Ivana. Um, this name came out just from my younger students. They would always call me this and it kind of has like a nice ring to it. So I figured, hey, why don't I just make this a thing online, right? But basically, I am a certified ESL instructor. I've completed all my training and education here in Toronto, Canada. Um, I've lived in Canada for most of my life, and I've taught at a college here. I've volunteered at different public school boards. Um, I've taught abroad uh, as part of my internship. One was in Tokyo, and the other one was in Havana, Cuba. These were very different yeah. experiences, but definitely ones that shaped me. Um, and ones that I obviously Amazing. learned a lot from, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of them was yeah. very far, one of them was a bit closer. But yeah, ever since 2020, I, I left my full time job. It was nerve wracking, but I really wanted to try doing this full time and kind of go solo mm -hmm. and try it out on my own. And so far, so good. Yeah. So far, so good. <laughs> Amazing. So you've had the opportunity to travel around the world, like you've visited many countries. How was that? It was, I have to say, to be, I, I'm always very honest with this, right? It, you mm -hmm. have to be prepared before you do something like this, right? Of course, a lot of people yeah. will go and have their co-op or, you know, this work opportunity and they'll think, oh my God, I get to travel and I get to experience different foods and all of this. And yes, yes, you do. Yeah, but it sounds nice. It sounds nice from... Yes. To think of it, that's something amazing, going to exactly. travel, but I don't think exactly. it's all amazing. <laughs> you have to, you really have to educate yourself on the culture that you are going into. You have to yes, absolutely. understand um, expressions and at least how to say, thank you, how are you, how much does this cost, do you understand, right? Like basic interactions, because you can't just go into a completely foreign country that you've never been to, that you don't understand the language of, and expect yourself to be this amazing teacher who only knows English. It's kind of a, yeah. I, I want to say almost an ignorant stance. Um, yeah. And I wish I, I had educated myself more. Um, and that's something I'm mm -hmm. moving forward, for sure. Yeah, amazing. So, teacher Ivana, like you've been... Uh, through this uh, teaching experience, how would you, did, did you teach in real classes or just have yes. like, uh, yes. yeah, real classes. Absolutely. So um, how would you ex describe this ex these experiences you've had as a teacher? Of course. Of how course. would you describe, I mean, my question is, how would you describe the job of teaching if you were asked to, yeah. to give it a title like all these years? Okay, so I would say that teaching is kind of like a energy exchange. I think it's reciprocal, okay? It's, it's a mm -hmm. practice in which you have to learn from the students that you're teaching if you want to be a good educator per se. It has to yeah. be some kind of- To learn from your student. This is really and, interesting. And so if you have this stance of a know-it-all, you know that expression in English, you think you know, you've reached the peak, you're an educator, and this people have this complex very often, right? I've, I've yeah. been an educator for X amount of years, I have a master's, a PhD, whatever. And so they don't give themselves mm -hmm. the opportunity to grow and evolve. And so I think always like teaching involves training yourself, you know, assessing yourself and learning from others. I think that would be the greatest takeaway I, I have from all of these years. Yeah. 
Amazing. So uh, uh, teaching is full of challenges, and I think that um, if you, if uh, most of the teachers I ask uh, uh, this question, they they would say like challenges, and they would always speak about like negative things uh, when when speaking about teaching. Yeah, right. of course, it's full of challenges, and but it's part of the job. It's like something that is linked to to teaching. Whenever you talk about teaching, you talk about yeah. 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 I mean, I think if we were, if we were, uh -huh. yes, I think we're lagging. I think it's the connections lagging a little bit. <laughs> I, what I was going to say is basically, we can't always talk about the negatives. If, if it's something that, you know, you said that teachers mention always the challenges, then this yeah. shouldn't be a profession that someone dedicates their life to. If you constantly only look at the challenges, then maybe the profession isn't for you, for that particular yeah, person, you know? Of course. It has to be something you enjoy most of the time. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Is it good now? You can hear me, you can see me, no login, nothing? Perfect. Can you hear me? It's good. It's good. I can it's hear you. Me. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah I, okay. I can hear you, yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. So um, I would like to start with this first question, Teacher Ivana. Like, uh, re you know, when we want to learn a language, we need inputs. And of course, we need to use those inputs so that we can yes. produce the language ourselves. Like, when it comes to inputs, we have two types of inputs or two things that we should focus on uh, yes. reading and listening. Um, some people, they would consider listening a uh, priority. Others, they would say, like, reading is the best way to learn a language. Right. What would you say about this? I think that when you're learning a language, of course, reading and listening are both inputs. They're both methods of passive learning, right? So yeah. you, you don't have as much agency as you would when you're speaking, because that involves you articulating yourself and putting the knowledge into actual use, right? I think yeah. when you're learning a language, listening always does come first i wouldn't place yeah. importance on either logically one or the... yeah yeah because yeah. even if you look at children developmentally when they're learning a language any language right they hear mm -hmm. sounds before they're able to use them in written form or so that they can read right yeah. so yeah. i think that st you know students will always ask me is listening more important should i read more and i'm always stressing the more senses that you use, the more stimulations there are, the more fluent you will become. You cannot mm -hmm. merely focus on one skill. It's so, you know, inaccurate to think that that will form your fluency, right? But mm -hmm. because we're talking about reading and because I love reading so much, I do think that it plays a huge role in one's vocabulary. I think that that mm -hmm. would be the main, the main goal of reading and, and the biggest takeaway from from that one skill. Yeah, it's like when you're, you know, when you're, when you're reading, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's different from when you're listening. When you're listening, it's like you may not pay any attention to what you, what you're hearing. Yes. Yes. You may just hear in sounds, people speaking. Um, as opposite to reading, um, your senses are there. Like you're mm -hmm. trying to focus so that you can understand and you pay attention to vocabulary. And um, even sometimes you get more vocabulary than, than from listening. Yes, yes, absolutely. And when you're, yeah. when you're reading, it's really, really important to focus, like you mentioned. I saw some yeah. of the questions from, from your students. They were asking, you know, I'm not interested in reading. This is not a skill that I enjoy, which is completely common. I hear it all the time. I hate reading. It's boring, et cetera, et cetera. I think what it is, is the students not focusing. In order yeah. to actually enjoy and to learn, you have to eliminate any distraction. So if you're sitting down and you open a book, a textbook, a magazine, whatever it might be, and your phone is ringing and you have music in the back and you have so much mm -hmm. going on, you can't Notifica possibly... Instagram notifications. Exactly. You can't possibly sit there and concentrate and actually learn anything. And another thing mm -hmm. is, if you're not choosing a genre or a, a platform that you are interested in, that's applicable to you, right? So students will be, for example, a beginner level, and then they'll choose an academic article 
on a topic that's not of interest and say they don't enjoy yeah. reading, right? Yeah. So choose the genre that's right for you and choose the level and topic too. That's very important. Yeah, so it's very important, as you said, to eliminate uh, distractions because when you're distracted, you can't expect like to, to focus because reading is all about focusing, enjoying it because if you can't enjoy reading, you can't actually read. And no. uh, <laughs> I think that this lack of motivation to reading, I, I think uh, I would imagine like most of my students are more into listening than to reading. Like um, in my class where I teach, like if I ask them like, listen, we're going to watch a video about this or like they will, uh, you will have their attention. But if you give them like um, pages to read, I think that they may read them, but not as focused as they were with the, with the video. See what yes. I mean? So uh, how can we be motivated to, to, uh, to read in? Yes. Like apart so, from, uh, from not being distracted and choosing the interest, it's very important. Yes. So the first thing that came to mind when you, when you said that your students prefer listening to audio visuals, for example, a video, let's say a video on YouTube. I think the reason that people mostly enjoy this is because it's also visual, right? You're yeah. able to see a picture while you're listening simultaneously. So what mm -hmm. I always suggest is storybooks. I know that there is a stigma Amazing. around, oh, I'm an adult. Why am I reading a children's storybook, right? Because it seems yeah. a little bit odd, but... They were coming to this, like, um, there have been some students who sent me questions about what should we read. We're coming to this. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think that there's nothing wrong with picking up a children's storybook. I, in any language, I love storybooks. I find that regardless of what level it's at, regardless of the vocabulary, it always teaches you a message. It teaches you idioms, expressions, themes, literary devices. Plus, yeah. as you're looking at the pictures, you have the words there so that it's visually engaging. There is a connection. So it's really important, I guess, in learning uh, vocabulary, this connection between pictures and the word, it's very, very important. It helps you remember the word. Yes, absolutely. As yeah. opposed to picking up a complex novel, for example, yeah. where you're reading... I don't know, an 1800s poet, like that won't work, right? So you yeah. have to choose something that, of course- You know, it, it happens to me when I first started learning English. Well, I started with a very, um, let's say, complex novel, um, which I started reading like after the 20th page, maybe. I just gave up and say, like, I'm never going to read again. But even this 20 is it. pages, you came far with 20 pages. Yeah, yeah, I came far, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. So uh, reading, like, w c can we say that some learners, um, they, they, they don't really learn from, from reading or they can't learn from reading because, uh, you know, we have different types of learners and there are those who prefers listening more or learns from listening more. Like um, if they listen to something, they would learn more than if they, 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 they read something. Yeah, Do you agree so, with this? Do you think that it, it depends on the learner style of reading or reading? We should really press ourselves in order to, uh, to, to, right. to, to make an effort and read. Right. So I, I do absolutely stand by the fact that there are different learning styles and that, you know, inevitably some people are more kinesthetic learners, visual, etc. Yeah. But I think that there are different ways to incorporate reading while incorporating other skills. So, for example, if you are interested in listening to podcasts, right, you, you have mm -hmm. a podcast you really like on, I don't know, Apple, for example, right? Yeah. You, can you can listen to the podcast while you read the transcript of the podcast. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. listen to music while you read the lyrics. You can listen Amazing. to a movie. Well, Love it. Then. It's a really interesting idea. Yeah. Right. So, so to include reading, like with listening, like you can yeah. watch a movie and still you can read exactly. Exactly. subtitles. So both and make it fun. Make, like yeah. learning has to be enjoyable. If you have to force yourself and if you're just dreading it, then you won't make any progress. You have to enjoy yeah. it and make it easier on yourself. But, like in general, you have to find a way to read. Like you can't. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, reading is really uh, an important part of the process of learning, like uh, so Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I've got some, some questions um, yeah, that I've sure. already sent you. Let's yeah. get a look at, I think we've answered, we've already answered some of, uh, some of the, these uh, questions, but yes. I think this one is a general question. How to be a good reader? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how to be a good reader? It, it, there are a couple of tips I have for this, okay? So mm -hmm. first that we mentioned was choose the genre that interests you. If you want to be a good reader, you have to start at a level that's applicable to your proficiency. So be realistic. Don't be hard on yourself. Choose a genre that interests you and a level that interests mm -hmm. you. The second thing of being a good reader is something we already mentioned, eliminating distractions, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. then also a mistake I find that really sets students back is checking the dictionary and translation, Google Translate, throughout the whole reading process, okay? So yeah. if you have, let's say you're in class and you have an English textbook, and mm -hmm. your teacher says, read pages 34 to 35, and you're reading through it on your own and you're like, oh my gosh, what's this word? Let me go on Google Translate. Now let me go back, what's this word? Let me go on. This will completely I guess it will pause mm -hmm. that fluidity of reading, right? Yeah, you have to let yeah. Yourself... It, it would work like a distraction as well. Exactly, so you're actually yeah. countering the, the learning process. So what you're doing is yeah. you're pausing it, you're not allowing yourself to contextually understand the words. You have to mm -hmm. discover the meanings. That's how, that's how vocabulary is memorable and that's how it's retained. If you discover And that's it, why, as you said in the beginning, as you said in the beginning, we should pick the level. Like, we shouldn't go for something hard, like, above our level. Yes, absolutely. And you know what? Yeah. Like, what I always suggest, even for younger readers, right? Doesn't matter what your age level is. Read through it. If you don't understand one word, a any expression, keep reading. Just keep reading. Yeah. You can reread it if you'd like. And then, I bet you any anything that you will understand it eventually in its context and in relation yeah. to other ideas. So this is reading yeah. between the lines, right? So that's another yeah. tip that I think is important. Um, and then also, this is something that I, I, if I don't say it now, I'm going to forget, but here's a tip, okay? Yeah, so yeah go ahead. When, when you're reading, okay? Uh, if you want to see how your reading knowledge transfers to a speaking skill, okay? Take mm -hmm. a book or whatever you're reading, pick it up, and start reading out loud and record yourself all over video, okay? So just yeah. record yourself reading. And then don't even worry about how you look, nothing. Just read, read, read. Go back into the video and then listen to your pronunciation. Listen to your tone, yeah. your intonation, all of this. Mm -hmm. That way, those two skills, you can work on both and you can hear, hey, is my speaking improving? How can I improve it? What are mistakes that I'm making? So then you're being reflexive. You're thinking about your own mm -hmm. mistakes. And I think that's yeah. really important. Be realistic, assess yourself, and use all the skills that you can in different ways. Yeah, it's really important. Like recording yourself, listening to yourself, yes. like can give you a time to flex, like uh, see your improvement. Are you really improving or not? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Finding creative ways, right? Yeah, it, sure. Looking at traditional methods, just reading a book, completing a worksheet, it's outdated. It, it doesn't mm -hmm. work anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think that this question is related. Uh, first, she's saying thanks for inviting my favorite English teacher. Oh, um, okay. Is reading aloud helps fix the pronunciation issue? Like you mentioned, uh, recording yourself and then listening to yourself. It's, it helps. So does it help in or fix pronunciation issues? Yes, absolutely. I think so. I think that even... uh, excuse me. Like, do do you rec would you recommend reading out loud more than reading silently? Absolutely. Just I, I between, this... between quotes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I say this to my students when they're completing their own work as well. So let's set aside mm -hmm. others' work. Let's let's pretend that you know your student has written a, a summary of a text that they read. Okay and they're trying yeah. to edit their own work, their own writing. So this is where writing correlates with reading and speaking. 
So read aloud your own work and then either assess yourself or get someone else to evaluate you. So you can mm-hmm. send it to a friend, a family member. I know it seems a little bit awkward, but it will help so much because you'll get actual feedback, right? And yeah. you're more likely to be comfortable speaking into your own phone than speaking yes. directly in real time to someone else. So it's mm-hmm. like, I, I definitely think that that would help. That would be a great idea. Yeah. So, so, so it can help like fix pronunciation issues. Sometimes when you have someone else uh, yes. correct for you, you, have, you, he may see something that you may not see. Sometimes when you listen to yourself, you know, there are distractions. You focus on your voice. You, you may focus on other things, but someone else will pay attention to mistakes, to, especially to pronunciation mistakes. Yes. But I think in my... In my yeah, in my personal point of view, I think that's that learning uh, or reading out loud really helps students because um, when you're reading out loud, like you're doing two things at the same time, you are reading, yes. uh, you're enjoying reading, and at the same time you're listening to yourself, and right. you're 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 like noticing uh, the progress you've done, like in your pronunciation, in sounds, like so. There are many things that will change. Exactly, and keep keep the videos. Don't delete the videos, yeah. you know, start, sure. let's say start in September, keep one video from each month and then go back and look at how much you've, you've evolved over those couple of months. It's incredible. Yeah. I think the second question actually is related to what we mentioned at the beginning. Um, I don't have the passion of reading. What should I do? People, mm. most of them, they don't have this passion to, towards reading. They may have it yes. towards listening, <laughs> watching a movie, <laughs> listening yeah. to music, but reading, no. Reading is like a monster, like, uh, you know, something that we all fear, yes. something that we don't like. Yeah. I How mean, do we get okay, this so passion? I just thought of, so, you know, my friend, uh, he, he hates reading, okay? Hates it. And so what I did was, and obviously, you know, he's in his late 20s. So what I did was I bought him... Uh, a book that's kind of like a comic book slash infographic format that teaches mm-hmm. you the concepts, but in a very colorful, dynamic, creative way, right? Mm-hmm. So if you, if you truly hate reading, then you may be, this is what I, what I believe. I don't think anybody can hate it. I think you just haven't discovered something to your liking. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's all it is. That's all it is. So mm-hmm. like, keep searching, keep looking for things that interest you, and also find something that's within your goal. So for example, if you're looking to travel to an English speaking country, and you're just coming on a visitor's visa, and you want to learn conversational English, then you should be reading yeah. something like a blog, or a magazine, something very mm-hmm. chill, very, very, you know, informal. You know, now because... there, are, there are a lot of alternatives. There are a lot of ways of reading exactly and sometimes yeah. we read without even noticing we do it subconsciously we read yes. on a daily basis everywhere you're walking down the street you see a billboard you see a poster on a bus and you're reading yeah you you're reading yeah. reading it just doesn't interest you yeah i see don't you think ivana that um the reason why people in the past, and I think, uh, I don't know about Canada and other countries, but in my country, I believe that uh, this new generation, uh, they are not really into reading because of this advancement, this improvement yes. of technology. And yes. uh, now there are more distractions, as you said in the beginning, more distractions, like there are videos, there is YouTube, uh, social media. People can find a lot of material that they can enjoy by listening and watching. Uh, we didn't have this in the past. That's why people in the past, our grandparents, I believe, they read more than we're doing now. Don't you agree? Yes. And it's a little, not a little, it's very unfortunate, right? I yeah. think that with the advancement of technology, there have been so many benefits at the same time, yeah. right? Because you have more access to different forms of reading um, on a larger scale. But at the same time, some of the things the items that students are reading, they're not thought provoking. They don't involve critical thinking. They don't, yes. you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't involve you to get into that deep, deep process of just learning and thinking and, and 
you know, innovating, thinking of new ideas, it's very surface yeah. level, right? Um, yeah. So that's why we, we need to try and incorporate print as much as we still yeah. can, even though everything's digital, try to try to incorporate both both forms, I think. Mm -hmm. as and we have this also, lately we've had this, uh, what they call audio books, and yes. more people are into audiobooks because of the time. Now people don't have time in, uh, like they, they like to do everything quickly. Um, they would rather listen to a book while driving their car, for example, uh, rather than uh, sitting like in a place and reading a book, yeah. I believe. And I, I think that um, what you're doing is actually amazing because um, I'm into reading children's stories. You may find it. Like I'm a teacher now, and I'm into mm -hmm. reading children's stories. I mm -hmm. find them very interesting, and sometimes yeah. I enjoy those stories with the simple, with their simple plot, with the, you know, with all yeah. the things. Uh, children's stories. I love to read children's stories. Some yeah. people they would, they would say, "How? Yeah, you can still read children's stories, uh, even when your level in English is good." bad it doesn't matter of course it reminds you i find this when i'm reading live right it reminds you of what it's like almost to be a child again where you you know you see life you, you start learning lessons and relearning mm -hmm. them in a different perspective as an adult yes right yeah so you're like oh wow you know, comparing I forget this because how you again, saw it in the past and how you see it now yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But when it comes to listening, this is something I want to mention with the audiobooks that you said. The mm -hmm. difference in this, if you're already fluent in a language and you want to listen to an audiobook because it's more convenient, go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. However, if you're relying on reading through that method as a beginner or let's say your intermediate level, you yeah. don't know the spelling of these words. You're just listening yes. to them. Yes, the pronunciation, but you should also know the spelling because it correlates with reading and with writing in everyday yeah. life. So I wouldn't suggest relying on it, but I do think it's something that's convenient for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so someone's saying in the comments that audiobooks, they destroyed reading. Do you agree with this? I wouldn't say destroy. I think that's a little bit yeah. extreme. Me too, I would <laughs> I, say, yes. I think it's just a different method. Again, don't focus on one thing. That's when it becomes um, destructive and doesn't allow you to grow if you're just aiming at one particular uh, item. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there is a question here from someone yeah. saying, could you please recommend some helpful books for advanced English? Mm. Okay. For advanced English. So again, this depends, like advanced is also a very general level. Yeah, <laughs> like a general we don't know term. how but let's advanced, say, yeah. Yeah, uh, fluent, okay. So if we're saying someone's completely fluent, um, I, I, every time I get this question, I'm always stuck because if I recommend something, again, what if it yeah. doesn't interest the person? What if I see, so let, let, <laughs> let's just say, because as you said, it's a general term when you say, someone advanced like you may be a native speaker yeah. but your relation with reading is not that good and maybe you, yeah. if, if you start reading a novel that is very advanced as a native speaker you may find problems yeah exactly and yeah. i could recommend you something now that i enjoy for example um if i were to, to like label myself as an advanced reader okay i enjoy mm -hmm. romance i enjoy reading about mystery I enjoy thrillers. These are my genres that I really like for um, fiction. Now, if I were to recommend mm -hmm. it to someone, even if they're at the same level as me, maybe they'll think this book sucks. <laughs> you know, like, so yeah. it depends on your interest. They will not like it. You know, it's a, a reading is it's also like, like, like food. It's a taste. It's, um, yes. like we, we pick what we like. So uh, we have different interests. So it's, it's totally natural and normal that we exactly. don't like the same thing. We don't like to, to read about the same thing. Um, another question here, uh, which I, I hear quite a lot, says, uh -huh. would you say reading is sufficient to learning a new language or it should be blended with other ways? Like, should we just read or do other things? Blended if we, 1,000%. If, yeah, yeah. 
absolutely blended in every way possible because think about it this way if you immerse yourself i'm always saying this word you know immerse yourself immerse yourself, immerse yourself. yes and it's like you know pretend so when you when you go to a new country pretend you come to visit canada for example right you mm -hmm. inevitably immerse yourself in the language because it's everywhere it's the first language right but yeah. when you're not when you're not in an english speaking country it's more difficult so you have to constantly find ways how can i speak it how can i listen to it which items can i use to read and how can i write so another thing that i actually uh wrote down here that i i can't forget while you're reading mm -hmm. okay this is goes hand in hand with the question mm -hmm. while you're reading something let's say you read um i don't even know a poster about penguins this is so random okay mm -hmm. <laughs> you learned about penguins yeah. okay yeah it works it works yeah. <laughs> and i did this because i just had a lesson on penguins with grade one. anyway mm -hmm. so a way that you can correlate writing with this is by taking out a piece of paper by yourself completely by yourself and writing down mm -hmm. three sentences sentence number 1 i learned that what i mm -hmm. learned whatever it is that you learned okay sentence number 2 yes. i am still confused about what what is something that mm -hmm. an idea or a term anything sentence number 3 i hope to discover what So what's something mm -hmm. that I still hope to learn about even if you're learning you're reading a novel oh I hope to discover how that character will meet that person. So it's uh, a yes. way to kind of reflect and then also write based on your what you read. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's that's really be... amazing. It it also helps you like uh, uh use those expressions you mentioned. I yes. hope to So it's like you're practicing uh, other expressions, other English expressions. Exactly. It's really and don't worry about the spelling. Like when you're, yeah, when yeah. you're journaling, just do it. Just, you know, people worry too much unless you're in a class and you're getting graded, just as much as you can practice, that's the best that you can do. Just keep keep mm -hmm. being consistent. Yeah. Okay, so see like other question. I'm just receiving some some questions and we would like to um share opinions about them of course of course yeah um yeah so this question here says should i understand all the words when i'm reading a book or uh there's no need to to, to understand i think you spoke about this um you you I'm mentioned sure. in the beginning yeah it, it's you don't really need to understand every word in an article or in a book you're reading like uh, exactly unless it's for example a term let's say they're constantly mentioning that one term right whatever it might be let's say it's a medical term and you're thinking oh my like what is this and it's driving you crazy mm -hmm. look it up then it's necessary but if it's just within a couple of sentences keep reading and don't worry about translating it because it's it's going to make your reading process way less fluid for sure Yeah, you you hate it because um each time you stop and go to dictionary translate and go back um you will not like it. Of course you will no, not like it. It makes absolutely. the process very hard. Absolutely. Reading it should be enjoyable as you said. We should have fun when we read. Uh you know, you should stuck into the book like uh, you want to know what's happen next like like watching a movie I would I would say. Yes, and reading a book, you know, when you read literature the the whole beauty of it i think is visualizing what it is that you're reading right so a really uh, yes. really good book will allow your mind to just like wander where you're like you can see yourself in that forest or you hear the stream that's the whole point of reading it's you're supposed to really really get into it and if you're not into it then maybe novels aren't for you try another format right no I see. Um there is a question here. Uh it uh -huh. says what are the methods that can help students generate uh benefits from reading improving their English? Yes, he means like what how can you use reading to improve your English like practically speaking? Uh you see you see what he means by the question? Yeah, so in terms of how you can use reading aside from vocabulary I think it can also be different expressions that you learn from reading but if it's practically then you have to read practical English formats 
So you can, mm -hmm. again, again, find something that's suitable to you. If you read a uh, newspaper article, this is real life. These are real life instances. This is something that's yeah. very practical. Um, then you can transfer the vocabulary, the expressions, the terms to real life. Only if it's like mm -hmm. generally applicable to you. The more you use it, the more applicable it is. That would be my answer. Yeah. So it should be like something that, that, that you can use in real life. Uh, with my students, you know, um, to make them learn from reading, that, that's really a tough job to do. Uh, mm -hmm. But if, if I think in class, for teachers, speaking to teachers, if you can make your students um, discuss or make uh, reading competitive a little bit, yes. try to say, for example, um, if you can, or divide them into groups maybe and tell them uh, the group that can finish this part of the book and summarize it or something like this or speak about it for one minute uh, are the winners. Um, yes. I think this way, I'm speaking about stories. Uh, it works for stories, like yes. uh, for a little bit uh, intermediate level. You, yes. We can have students um, read something and uh, try to explain it their own way or try yes. to narrate the events or uh, talk about what happened in the story. Absolutely. I used to, yeah. <laughs> I used to do this thing. Yeah. So at the, this college that I taught at, um, we had a, a general curriculum that we had to teach. Uh, however, mm -hmm. we luckily had a lot of uh, many opportunities to use our own ideas for the for the activities. So one mm -hmm. of the things that I would do was I would <laughs> I would have them and they're adults. I would you know task them to create like a, a play or a performance of their own based on whatever it is that they're reading. Okay, so mm -hmm. some of them were kinesthetic learners so they liked getting up and they couldn't sit down so i would yeah. just be like and they were i would say intermediate to advanced right so they yeah, already yeah, have yeah. jobs here upper right? intermediate yeah so i want you to visualize that demographic they're not kids right but when you yeah have, yeah i see adults yeah and when you have a dialogue that you're reading or a play or an excerpt from an interview for example when you give them a follow-up activity, the reading will, will always be less dreadful because they're thinking, oh, now I can execute what I'm reading in like a performative way. Or you can task them, hey, create your own story. That way they can write, uh, they can yes. read and draw their own pictures. Even though it sounds like it's for younger learners, it's very creative for older students too. Yeah. So, um... I see so many like comments. I can't even yes. keep track. Yeah, th there are comments. I'm, I'm trying to, guys, if you have any questions, try to put them in the question box below mm -hmm. here um, because we can't see all the comments. And uh, sometimes it's okay. really hard. I think this question is, is very, very general. Right. But I would like to have your opinion about this, how to speak English. This this is related to speaking. It's another skill. We're talking about reading. But if you would like to link between reading and and speaking, can uh, reading of course it can help you speak the language. Mm -hmm. But how can we transfer yeah, what we read? Best... Yeah. Right. I think that mm -hmm. would best tie into presentations. It, I mean, academically speaking, right? So you know. Mm -hmm reading comprehension. Tell us what it is that you learned. Tell us uh, um, something that really intrigued you, right? This is where you utilize the terms in a verbal way. Um, and mm -hmm. then also, like I mentioned before, something that's very common is reading aloud. And then I'm yeah. going to pretend, okay, so let's say this is something that I wrote and I'm reading it out loud to myself on video, okay? I would then listen yeah. to myself on video but also copy and paste the text mm -hmm. into a like audio generator online so that uh, a, mm -hmm. a machine AI can read it and then I can compare my pronunciation to the actual oh, uh, like AI. That's interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that could yeah, also yeah. work and it's for free. Like there's so many websites like that online. So those would be my two, yeah. my two great suggestions for that. Yeah. Uh, th there are some apps that can help you. That's some mobile apps. For apps, I'm not sure. I do know that there's websites. Like if you type in um, 
uh, I think it's called transcript audio or audio generator, something like this. You can copy and paste it. Oh, yes. It can edit it for you and it can also read out each word one by one. And you can choose if ah. you want it to be American English, British English, etc. Mm -hmm. So it reads for you. Yeah. And then yeah. you can compare yeah. your pronunciation and notice any mistakes you've made. Amazing. See, this yeah. is a really great way. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. We're looking through yeah, uh, related to related to what we spoke about, um, uh, someone is having comment on uh, say how to benefit from reading if we don't check the dictionary. <laughs> if you if you if you never check a dictionary, how would you how would you understand? I think that she what she right, means. Right. Uh, you, th you spoke about context. I think. Uh, yeah, of course. So I think that. Um, Aside from generally the benefits of reading, how would you, I guess, learn or how does reading even help in any way? I think that if you're not checking the vocabulary, you're giving yourself the opportunity to discover the meaning, right? So if you mm -hmm. pick up any book and you see a word in its context, you will be able to eventually discover what it means on your own if you give yourself the opportunity. If you keep reading, you will be able to understand, hey, I've seen this word in relation to this idea, or every time it appears before this noun, it, it might mean this. And then if you're still unsure, then I would say to look it up. But if yeah. you stay consistent, you keep reading, it will come to you naturally. So you don't have to check the dictionary all the time, truly, truly. <laughs> yeah, sure. Like if the word is really necessary in understanding, uh, the text or what you're reading, I think you can go and, and uh, or if sometimes you read an article or you read a story or something and the word is repeated many times. Yeah. And you come across the words many times, many times in the story or in the article, but you can't understand it, like you are unable to, to get it. Yes. This way, yes. I think you can go and check dictionary in order to understand that, that word. But yeah. to go and check it from the first time, I think you should give yourself time uh, to progress furthermore in uh, further in uh, in the story, and then you can find the meaning. I think it's a skill that we have to learn. It's not just about. Uh, it's a skill to understand from context or to read between the line. I think uh, not everyone can do this. To be honest, uh, especially speaking about young learners, I think this skill of understanding a word from the context still yeah. needs time or needs some work. Of course. Of course, yeah. and I, I remember there was this one book I was reading, I think it was something like on the top of, 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 medi of uh, meditation. I think it might have been meditation, yeah. And yeah. there was a phrase that the author kept stating. It was like, I see you, I, I see you, I see you constantly. And I saw on the live, students were asking, what does he mean I see you? Like, I just see you, I'm looking at you, right? But contextually, mm -hmm. eventually, they realized when you say, I see you, this means I almost understand you. I, I feel you. Yeah, soul. I got it. I see through you who you are, not just surface level. And so they realized yeah. it eventually. They were asking me, what does it mean? I was like, wait, wait. And actually, they're like, oh. I'm like, see, just take your time. Right? We got and it. You'll discover it eventually. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, I think... Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, my, my next question is, is a question that I got from my students in class. And uh, it is a remark of many teachers uh, teaching in schools. Uh, right. They have this remark about students is that they have no problem when it comes to reading, understanding and comprehension. Like they would almost understand, let's say 95% of the text or of the story or something. But when it comes to using the vocabulary, the expressions uh, that they learn in reading, it's not there. They can't speak. Uh, I think, uh, do, do you think that reading and speaking, these two things, they, they should go together or reading should come first and then we should start speaking uh, bit right. by bit? I think if we're looking at all four skills of a language, this is, this is the chronological order I think everybody should go in. I think listening mm -hmm. comes first, 
this is the most yeah. passive way of learning where you're just internalizing and intaking the information, right? Like you mentioned input, then you yeah. go on to reading. This is where everything you can listen to, which is the easiest form technically, can go into words and phonetics mm -hmm. and pronunciation. Yeah. Then we have more of an output through writing. So that's a different form. And then you move on to speaking. I think speaking yeah. is the one that involves the most agency. It's the most real, you know, it's a real time interaction, right? So take yeah. those chronological steps to eventually get to speaking and don't expect to get here unless you complete these steps first. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and, and it takes time. Of course, we need to take time. You know, it's been, uh, now it's been nearly 50 minutes since we started the live. <laughs> yeah. The times, yeah, goes very fast, you know. Um, I really enjoyed this uh, conversation with you. Um, a lot of information, a lot of great tips you've mentioned. Thank you so much for this opportunity for